Okay, everyone. I know it's been a while since my last video, and I've been just really busy with work, had to visit my grandma in a different state, and then I got sick. But I'm back now, and I still don't have my computer, so please bear with me. I'm still uh, using this different computer. Um, the audio still is going to kind of suck a little bit for the, for like the next maybe two or three weeks. But uh, yeah, supply chain crisis, y'all. They, they said they're waiting like four weeks for this one part they're trying to get, um, which is just uh, like an RF sensor. So, you know, go figure. Anyways, when I saw that the patch came out, I knew that I had to get back on YouTube and, you know, make this video. Anyways, without further ado, let's begin. So first, let's do Roadhog, the man of the hour, the reason why everybody was anticipating this patch so much. So here are the changes to Roadhog. They reduce the damage of his hook from 30 to 5, which I think is a great change since it already kind of pulls you out of position, uh, which is kind of very powerful on its own. Uh, I don't think any other damage is that necessary and this is actually something i had in uh, one of my reworks for the for his hook so uh you know that that kind of went through um the second one is that now when he pulls you in you are four meters away from him instead of being directly in front of him this is actually good because it essentially prevents you from taking the full brunt of the scrap gun damage so uh, this was actually something i had also suggested in my uh my roadhog uh, uh chain video so I'm glad that this also this also went through, uh, and there's a, there's a few cool new texts that came from this that I'll talk about later. Um, but uh, yeah, the next one is that they reduced the damage of his gun essentially by 10%. It, it, each like pellet did 6.6 .6 damage. Now they each do six, so you know 10% reduction. So they, in they increased his ammo by one and slightly increased his firing rate, which is you know you, you give and take here and there. Um, this these these ones are kind of you know it's not that that big of a, a i guess a slight buff for his fire firing rate but uh you know it is it is what it is so you might see these like basic things that should have come out like a long time ago and uh, that's what i also thought the first time i you know looked over the the changes because they had said that when they do changes to like uh these big kind of changes they don't want to just kind of change the numbers they want to do more intelligent or you know more creative ways of fixing solutions than just manipulating the numbers uh which is kind of like exactly what they did here <laughs> they, they just kind of shifted the numbers around uh and it's possible that it could have been and possibly could have come out a while ago like at the beginning of the month when the other um the other patches came out uh but instead they gave us two months of having to play this horrible meta with roadhog dominating so anyways, they said that the reason this took so long to come out was because Roadhog had some secret glitch that nobody knew about. Um, so they had to kind of fix that first before this one came out. And uh, this is news to me. And uh, honestly, I don't even know if I believe them. <laughs> like, for two reasons. Uh, I don't know what type of glitches a character could have that would... Uh, that would affect just changing the numbers of their of their damage i don't i really i really don't see what what can do that they really just shifted the numbers around i don't i'm not sure what could have happened with that um unless maybe because of the hook um there was maybe some animation problem with um the where the hook will kind of leave you maybe maybe but other than that that doesn't it doesn't make sense they and, and i'm talking as somebody who programs uh who has a pretty extensive background in programming uh it, that doesn't really make any sense to me if you're just going in and changing the numbers if that's how it's done i'm just assuming um that that doesn't make any sense to me uh other than that the the second reason why i don't even know if i believe them is uh they said that this rework would be out in january while they knew about this supposed bug honestly i think they just couldn't get the rework done in time so they just decided to throw this in um as a placeholder until they do the other rework and they also said this is what they're doing uh, that this is just a placeholder for, you know, the rework that they wanted to do. And uh, the rework will be coming out, uh, I think soon. I don't know what season they said. I don't know if it was like four or five or something. But in the meantime, this is this is what we get. And plus, the rework is not going to be any major rework. They just said that they want to add uh, to his utility. Uh, so something he does that I think protects the team. So they're probably going to give him a new ability and then kind of even probably nerf his damage even more. So it doesn't really seem like his playstyle will change much, if at all. Anyway, if this is real, uh, I kind of wish that they would have just told us back in the beginning of the month instead of leaving us in the dark. 
But anyways, I don't really, I don't really care that much now that he's not one shotting anyone anymore. I think that's, uh, that's, that's good. And honestly, I feel like these changes are pretty good, mainly because I don't think this has completely ruined Roadhog. Um, Roadhog actually still puts in like a lot of work, deals a great amount of damage. Um, he can step into the people he hooks to try to get that that big shot, but it just kind of gives you a chance to run away from his his oppressive combo. So I still seen them delete squishies. Uh, but at least you know they can kind of fight back or run away now. Even with Doomfist, I can just put up my power block now uh, and not have 60% of my HP taken out with like one attack. And what I've noticed is it's kind of more strategic now playing against Roadhog because if I do see a Roadhog, I would not put up my power block. I kind of wait for him to, I guess, try to hook me, or if he does hook me, I have my power block on me to kind of you know do what I need to do. So, but if I do kind of use it too early and then he hooks me and then I have no defense. Um, I could seismic slam out of there to, or turn around and punch, but it still it still does a lot of damage because you know I'm a tank, so I just I take more of the scrap gun pellets. But at least I could duel him like much better now. So he also has a new tech where he can essentially kidnap you. That's what I've seen people calling it. Um, so when he, because he pulls you now and you go four meters in front of him, it's way easier for him to kind of pull you off the stage because uh, you're further away from him. Uh, so he doesn't need to be that close to the edge anymore. Or if he is that close, he kind of just guarantees that you can just kind of fall off. Uh, if you don't have an ability that brings you back to the stage. And uh, what I've seen uh, a lot of people do also is uh, he can pull you and turn around and like essentially just put you in a corner where the rest of the team can't can't see or heal you or anything like that. And that is fucking cool. Uh, it's not OP, but it's one of the, the best things <laughs> that I've seen. For, it's like a really cool accident accidental uh, technique that came with this uh, with this nerf. Because yeah, I'm, I'm more than sure, more than sure that the, the developers did not, did not think of this themselves, <laughs> uh, just because of the track record. Uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a nice little surprise. And again, it's not OP because you can fight back. So you know, that's, that's pretty cool. I really like that about that. Uh, but guys, I'm gonna be honest with you. If they nerfed, if they nerfed Roadhog to the ground to the point where he was just completely unplayable, uh, I think th I would be perfectly fine with that. There has never been a time where Roadhog being a, a meta pick was good for the game. There has never been in the history of Overwatch been a point in the game where if Roadhog was a good pick or like a extremely meta pick, the game was fun. I hate playing against like the previous Roadhog before this patch more than I think I've ever hated anything in Overwatch. Like I was doing this, like I was doing the, you know, how to get to Master series with, uh, uh, with Doomfist and it was it was the worst because every game would essentially I would they, let's say I'm winning they switch to Roadhog uh, it's a, it's a harder counter it's big and these minor nuances and having somebody have a slight edge on you especially at those higher levels makes make like all the difference it makes all the difference there's like no margin of error and I just I just couldn't like at a certain point it was became so difficult to play Doomfist because Roadhog was just fucking killing everybody it it was horrible so i was always kind of forced to play orissa and then like almost every game uh say for a few no, no, no let's say 70 percent of the games would end up with uh either two orissas against each other or orissa versus roadhog and that was that was just so lame it, it just sucked like i hate this meta or the previous meta more than i've ever hated anything else overwatch more than i hated double shield uh on two cp in france and i'm not even exaggerating this is the worst comp has ever been, in my opinion, and I think it's because of Roadhog. I actually just completely stopped playing competitive uh, until uh, I just I wanted to wait till the Roadhog nerfs came in so that other characters could be more viable. So yeah, I'm sorry for the rant, but you know, uh, it was really shitty. So yeah, now let's go through everyone else. <clears throat> now, Arissa got one nerf. Now her Fortify gives her 75 HP instead of 125. So essentially her effective HP gain is uh, is 125 instead of uh, 208 uh, due to the 40 damage uh, reduction. And yeah, I've noticed her dying a lot more uh, when I'm playing, even like even while her Fortify is active, which is pretty cool. Um, so that's fine and all, but the problem isn't necessarily how much HP she gets uh, from her Fortify. The problem is just her cooldown cycles. She always has one of her two damage damage mitigating skills available, like always. Like she just she just doesn't die, so she's still like super survivable now. 
So, so like reducing the amount of HP she gets in her fortified, that does make a lot of sense. That's cool. But I would honestly just increase the numbers of her, of her cooldown because she just cycles through them like so quickly and they're, they're just always available for her. I also don't think that they needed to increase her damage fall off um, back in uh, the, the patch we had before the Christmas break. But uh, I think that is a big factor that of what sealed in her, her op -ness because they kind of, they buffed her to fight Roadhog, but now Roadhog has been nerfed. So unless they kind of tune her back down, she's going to be the next oppressive, uh, oppressive character. Well, no, actually, it won't be her. Um, it, it'll be Ramatra. Ramatra is a problem. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Ramatra is a problem right now. Uh, he is, uh, I think he's probably the best tank right now. And uh, he's a freaking menace, especially his ultimate, which they did say they want to kind of knock down a few pegs. Um, so, you know, at least the devs are, you know, they're, they're paying attention to it. So, yeah, they definitely said that it's way too powerful. So hopefully um, they change that by the beginning of uh, uh, the next season. Which is in like two weeks, right? So, you know. Hey everyone, I'd like to interrupt this video to remind you to like and leave a comment. It's the best thing you can do to a video so that YouTube increases its reach. And I'd really like to keep growing this community, especially since we have so many good discussions and debates in the comment sections. And I do read and um, try to reply to every single comment. So please like, leave a comment, and subscribe if you like it. But yeah, for the algorithm, please like and comment. <laughs> The next character is Kiriko, and yeah, they nerfed Kiriko. Uh, now the recovery for her Suzu is uh, one second instead of uh, 0.85 seconds. And uh, uh, this isn't the problem with Kiriko. <laughs> Kiriko's problem is that Suzu cleanses you and makes you invulnerable. Like you can't even interact with the, the people who are being cleansed, and it really sucks. Uh, plus she has that insane mobility. Um, she essentially has like two things that like keep her from dying. Uh, the fact that when she's teleporting, she's uh, she's invulnerable, and she has her little Suzu thing. And uh, yeah, I've seen uh, Kiriko's Suzu, not Suzu, um, teleport uh, right out of the uh, the Roadhog combo. Now that uh, there's like some some lag time, so uh, that's that's kind of funny because fuck Roadhog. And uh, during the interview uh, that the devs had about this this patch. Uh, they did point blank just say that Suzu was working exactly the way they wanted it to work. Like, <laughs> like they were told that Suzu is, is way too strong and it just counters everything with the push of a button. And they're like, yeah, it's working as intended. Um, you know, this, this is what they wanted to do. And honestly, I got to give props to them for, you know, sticking to their guns. If that's what they want and they're sticking to it, then even if I don't like it, uh, that, that demands some type of, of respect. But they did say that um, they want her healing less. Uh, they want her doing more of the Baptiste thing where he's she's like healing and attacking and healing and attacking. Because right now, they said that um, Kirikos tend to just kind of be heal botting. So I think actually, if they can bring down the amount of healing she does, uh, Suzu might be justified. Because now her healing output is like, I think it could be like the same as Mercy if you're just kind of, if you're just kind of heal botting. So uh, I think a lowered amount of healing that she does plus the Suzu will kind of balance each other out. So yeah, we'll see. I'm actually, I'm actually very interested in that. Next is uh, Sojourn. Now the railgun charge will be based off of, I guess, how many bullets you land on the, the enemy you're shooting instead of how much damage is done. So this is obviously just to address the, the mercy problem, the mercy pocket, because, you know, as mercy is pocketing you, you're doing a lot more damage, you're getting your railgun like every two seconds. And I've seen some pretty crazy things with this. And um, I think that this was actually a pretty smart way to fix the problem. And if, if you're going to go the, uh, if you're going to go to the Sojourn route, uh, which I, I can see why they don't want to go the other way because if they're fine with how Mercy's damage boost does with every other character and his only problem is with uh, is with uh, Sojourn, then I can see why they're they're hesitant with uh, with all that. Although Mercy is very powerful, she's uh, her pockets are insane and she's just so hard to kill. Like it's, <laughs> uh, I feel like that's a problem, just her mobility, but. Uh, it's also one of her defining factors, so uh, yeah, we, we'll talk about that in another video. So yeah, and also with the uh, now that the railgun is charged with uh, how many land bullets she lands, don't forget that she also has that increased spread. So I think together we'll be seeing the railgun shots like a lot less. And uh, guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna have another hot take. I, I've had a few hot takes so far in this video. I kind of came I came back angry, yo. I'm pissed off. It's been a while since I made a video, and I have all these emotions. 
but uh, yeah, I don't think Sojourn is that OP anymore. Like, I really don't. Like, uh, I, I, I don't. <laughs> I actually would argue that Junkrat is more OP, and it's uh, something that the dev said that they're also trying to look into a nerf. Junkrat damage output is just it's it's crazy for the the amount of skill required for him to get as much results as he does is completely absurd. He completely blocks off access to areas he's spamming and kills people he doesn't even know is there. So yes, I think he's uh he's much more effective than Sojourn at this point. And across every level, like there's not there's not a point in the game where you can't play Junkrat and get extremely good value from him. Like his ultimate, his 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 spamming, you just blindly kind of throw it in corridors and well not blindly, but you know, you you just kind of spam. You just strict not even strategically spam. <laughs> That's it. There's a little, there's a bit of geometry happening there, but you just kind of spam and you get kills. Like it's, it's it's just so powerful. Each one. <laughs> it's like, like anyways, like his combo. If you like, uh, you know, hits you with a mine and a and a grenade. Uh, it's a very fast combo. It happens like a, like a second, almost similar to uh, Roadhog's uh, combo. But the thing is, he's not Roadhog, right? He's he's not a tank, so he's also pretty easy to kill. But uh, even his uh, getting stuck in his trap, I, th I think he's a he's a bigger problem than Sojourn. Uh, but I don't even think he's that much of a problem because I could handle him pretty easily. Uh, so yeah, man, I I don't know, but I think he is. Uh, I, I think if he's not the best DPS right now, uh, I still think it's probably Sojourn, but. Uh, I, he's up there. He's he's definitely up there. So yeah, there you have it. Overall, I think these are pretty good. Um, at least, uh, or at least on the right track. I would say these are like really on the right track. They really did address a lot of the issues with uh, um, Sojourn, with Kiriko, especially with Roadhog, um, Orisa. They're they're trying. <laughs> they're not, they they need they need to like hit the hammer harder on Orisa now that everything's brought down next i think it's gonna obviously be ramatra uh i think reinhardt's getting a buff they said it's gonna be a, um a buff centered around his uh his fire strike which i don't think is the problem but uh you know we'll see um but yeah besides kiri but yeah, again i said kiriko kiriko not really uh they stuck to their guns so i guess they do see that there's a problem there but they did say that would bring down her healing so um they're you know they're addressing that and honestly guys save for like maybe two or three uh exceptions i would say maybe two exceptions the game is actually like one of the most balanced it's ever been i might it might be hard to believe especially with how like horribly out of the planet orissa and the roadhog just were like uh, a few days ago but if you kind of do a tier list you have like maybe two or three characters that are just beyond s s tier right that was roadhog uh maybe orissa was there uh maybe ramatra but uh but like i think 60 80 no, let's say 70 percent of the characters were like a or b tier and that that is actually like pretty awesome R roadhog was the biggest problem like i just said but uh i think the, the best the best the tier the best balance the game has ever been was probably uh maybe a year and a half two years ago um i think before I think when the last characters were out and uh, they finally had time to kind of balance everything and then it got um, unbalanced when they introduced uh, Junker Queen I think but before but that time was I think was the, the most balanced like everything was viable um, or could be made to work and this was Overwatch 1 right so I'm gonna make a video about that later but I do think that there's so many characters are viable like even like oh, I think all the DPS besides Sombra uh are viable people don't think may is viable i i did completely disagree i think may is very viable uh, in the right hands um <clears throat> i think she's very she's very powerful but uh but yeah i think uh i'm, I'm make a video about that later uh and you know make a tier list yourself and see where people flow like everybody is kind of like grouped up like pretty closely so yeah uh the last thing i want to say before the end of the video is uh whether you agree or disagree with these changes or these these patches where you think it addresses something or not i think it's important that we do appreciate that they are trying to communicate a lot more like the interview they did i think was very informative kind of lets us know what they do and don't know they're doing all these kind of blog posts and you know all these tweets and stuff i'm not on twitter because i care about my mental health but uh maybe i should get on it because it's good for it's good for the channel and to communicate with you guys but uh maybe i could just make my own non-toxic niche there but uh you know they have a knowledge that um they do need more than just two updates a season 
uh, and it's something that they've been doing. And uh, there, it does seem like they need to improve. They need like an official way to kind of just give out information because it's just like a post here, tw a tweet there, interview over there. Like it, nothing's like really centralized like that. But you know, the news circulates. So uh, yeah, I don't. I just don't want us to be kind of too too mean to the developers or the people talking to us to the point where they just stop communicating with us because you know they, they're people too right but uh that doesn't mean we can't give legit criticisms when you know the game obviously has so many flaws and it's because we care right so yeah anyways don't forget to like subscribe and leave a message for the algorithm i love you